Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third. Today it's about catching trophy lake trout. You're going to enjoy this video because we've got some good trout coming up in shallow water, but it's a little bit of a fickle bite. So we're going to use our cowbells and spin and glow program, but we'll share with you a tip and a technique that we use to take advantage of a light bite situation. Then we're going to bring these trout back to the dock, have them process, and we're going to go into the kitchens of the Westview Lodge and we're going to share with you a fish smoking recipe. We're going to show you how to prepare these, how to put them in the smoker, how to bring off a beautiful product that you can enjoy for the entirety of the fishing year. I'm Captain Bill Safe III. It's coming your way, so stay with us for this week's video. You take it, Andy. You take it. Mouse is coming to the wheel. You got it. Captain Chris Kirchner just set the hook on the number three. This one's the eyeball, man. Take that guy, Andy, and move him over to the right for me, if you would. Billy, 145. All right, 145. Decent Yeah. Perfect. We got a good one on here. We're running our Okuma Cold Waters here on our, uh, on our Blue Diamond Rods. This guy's got a little pull to it. Two different kinds of bells that we're using here today. Um, this particular one is an older Northern King Bell, and it generally has a little bit more pull. And uh, we're running hammerhead bells on the outside. Both very, very effective on trout. You will see periodically from one day to the next that one will be a little bit stronger than the other. A little bit to the left, Mousy. Yes, a little bit to the left, just yeah. a bit. I don't know, Chris, but I think he's getting his money's worth. Well, <laughs> I don't know if he's getting his money's worth or just laying low on us. You know? I don't know where. <laughs> Switch with you, Chris. Wind down, Andy. Stay in the back of the boat. Pull him to the left, Andy. Left, left. There you, there go, you go, right there. I'm going to trade with you, Chris. Okay, come back, Andy. Step to your right. Wind down. Wind down. Stay with him. Okay, raise your rod tip back. Easy, easy. Back up right there. Get him, Chris. Oh. Get him, Chris. Good job, buddy. All right. We short stabbed him there a little. He's close. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we might get 30 out of that guy. Nice. Big trout right there. That's why we came. Coming on the white. You see that lamprey was on him. Yeah, that, that just came off. Uh, yeah, for sure. Look at that trout. There's just an absolute dandy right there coming on number three, bottom tracking. There's that uh, eyeball man bell that we're using. And here's the combination that that guy was hitting, the white followed by the uh, silver green with a red head. A good combination on that trout. Well done, boys. Let's get another one. My buddy, Captain Chris Kirchner, locked in battle here on this laker. This particular one hit uh, the eyeball man blade. And on this particular setup, we're running a white pink. White's always good on trout, but it's especially good as we get later into the fall. And this one's got a silver, a tiny silver redhead spinner doubled up behind it. Just feeling like a better fish, Chris. This is a good fish, yeah. Stand that right in the outside holder there for me, Mouse, if you would. Got Captain Jeremy Reed working with me here, too, today, and he's going to do the old net duties on things. <laughs> we get him in a little bit closer. Good fish, kind of a quiet run here. We're kind of searching here a little bit, trying to find the best group of fish. See this boat just came in on us and turned up here, upwind. I think those fish are going to be up on the flat just a little bit further. We're kind of fishing the edge of the structure here and it's not working quite as good as when we were up on top of the flat. How deep, Andy? All right, steady as she goes here for a minute. Chris got a decent one on here. They've been picking at it light. So what happens when these fish start to pick at it light is uh, you'll see the rod tip just bump a little bit. We run the releases a little bit tight and you'll see it. A lot of times you have to strip that out and wind down a set to the fish. This one I had just adjusted on bottom and uh, he tripped it right in front of me. He took it out of the release no problem. And one of the things that's uh, kind of cool about that 
is when you're seeing fish in on the bottom, especially if it's a light bite, coordination between the guy at the wheel and the guy at the back of the boat running the rigs is critical. Because if you can drop that downrigger down, touch bottom with the ball, and dust it in the sediment, that looks like fish activity on the bottom. And that'll, a lot of times, ignite those fish and get them to bite. Here he's coming in right here. I'm gonna move your pliers for you, Mouse. A little bit better fish. Stay right in the back there, Chris. Come right in here, Mouse, in the middle. Easy on him, Andy. Don't lead with your head, Mouse. Oh, good, pull it in. Straight there, Andy, for me, please. Just a little bit. Wind down a little more, Chris. Let's take this guy. A little more. Yeah, Rod okay, get him, bud. Walk back. Get a Mouse. Nice fish right there, buddy. Nice big trout. All right. Look at that. And that is the flip of an experienced captain right there. No tangles in the net. That guy is, that guy is right out. And there is the white and pink uh, orange hash mark. And we're running uh, the little uh, silver green redhead behind that. A deadly combination on that fish. Pretty good one, Chris. Yeah, it was. Nice, yep. nice fight. He worked out super. Catching some great trout, and the guys are having a ball out here on Lake Ontario today. Let's take a look at uh, the trout candy that we're actually using to get these fish to hit today. If you're going to get serious about lake trout fishing, you probably need to set yourself up a box like this. In the old days when we fished Lake Ontario, we used a lot of peanuts, we used a lot of flatfish and quick fish, but in recent years, We've gone to spin and glows, and the reason that we go to spin and glows is because they tow straight behind the cowbells, and when the bottom is covered with zebra mussels and quagga mussels, it keeps from garbaging the hooks up with those shells and making your trolling rigs ineffective. But you'll notice that I've got silvers, I've got chartreuse, greens, purples, pinks, whites, all the necessary colors that we need to make up a variety of spinner combinations. What we like to do in the Safe Charter Fleet is color coordinate. If we're using silver blue bells, we want to combine that with some type of a, a silver offering, whether it's a silver, silver redhead spinner, silver blue bells, we could run white pink and silver that would be a good that would be a good bait to match it with purple would be a good ma match for a straight silver bell or a silver blue bell but if we're running chartreuse like we are today it's hard to beat the two-tone chartreuse and green spinner that i'm holding right here in my hands that's a go-to spinner that you want to lock into the memory bank because that's going to work well for you all the time a variety of different size beads and different color beads that we can run back to the hook and of course in our crash kit the bulk of the hooks that we're going to run for the majority of the lake trout rigs that we're working with is a number two hook something that's extra strong and that's laser sharp now here's a pair of spinners that i tied up ahead of time coming into uh, today's trip for our silver bells our eyeball man bell, a white with a pink spinner like this with a silver redhead behind it is perfect. And you'll notice that in front of that number two hook, I've got the three beads. That's what we were talking about in today's video. Stretching that hook back so that as a fish comes in to hit this bait, he's concentrating on this. He's not concentrating on the hook. As he goes up to nip at these, the hooks are already in his mouth. That's key when they're nipping at it. If it's a strong bite you don't have to run any you don't have to run any beads at all you can go right straight to the back of the spinners or with just one bead this is good for a silver combination let's take a look at this guy here we know that that chartreuse and green two-tone combination is highly effective here it is with the black hash marks or the tiger stripes on it and behind it we're running a black chartreuse with silver flake and then I've color coordinated the beads. And again, I'm in a three bead setup on this. That's perfect for either one of the chartreuse or chartreuse and green bells that I'm running. Put the three beads in behind that. Make sure that you got a number two, 2X or 3X hardness. And then the other thing that's kind of critical is I'm tying uh, my leaders.
meters. At 100 feet or 150 feet, fluorocarbon is not a necessity. It's hard to tie, it's hard to stack, and it gets brittle. A 20 or 25 pound test trilane big game will be exactly what you need. And remember, standardization is so critical in the safe charter fleet. Keep those spinner lengths at 32 inches and you'll have good production behind the cowbells. Let's go back to the action on Lake Ontario as fast and furious and we're collecting more lake trout for the smoke. Diamond, Jeremy Mouse Reed with a fish on. Small guy. Small. I think he picked it up and just started. Well, I can't tell now for sure. Oh, he's there. Keep working a little bit to the right, Andy. Came out of 152 feet of water. <clears throat> this one's on a straight chartreuse and silver. Oh, he's. He's Came a long ways there, Chris, without seeing anything on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, slowed up. Oh, yeah. Fish, long, are, fish are starting to move just a little bit. He's hammering. Yep. Come to the right there, Andy. Good fish. He's thumping pretty good. Yeah, well, we haven't got as many big trout as I would, would have expected on this run, but... Oh. That's all right from a culinary standpoint, from a smoking standpoint, it's great. <laughs> oh, oh my god, absolutely. The smaller ones are the best tasters. He's hammered pretty good, not bad. Right on the reel. You got it. Making sure you're cranking it just right now. <laughs> You only cranked in 150,000 in your life. I just wanted to make sure you had it. We were doing it right. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> so who's gonna net this thing? I'm right behind you, buddy. Oh jeez. Chris is there. Oh jeez. Have no fear. So are, are you gonna net me? All right. See where that line's going into the right mouse. Move him to the left here if you gotta. You got it. No, okay. we're good. We're you good right there. Okay, stay right at the back with the mouse. Get him close. Try not to let him shake. He's right in the end of the snoot. Right in the damn. Wind down again. Okay, we're gonna raise him right here. Raise him up, mouse. You get him, Chris. Dip him. Nice. Well done. Nice. Well done. Little guy, but we'll take him. Let's see. The, let's see the flip, Chris. Do it, size, mouse. Look at that business. Oh no! Don't Beautiful. Leave me don't leave me hanging. Oh, Color yeah. coordinated there. That's the oh, way yeah. it's done right there. <laughs> Good job, boys. Nice. That's gonna be a great smoker right there. It will be. That is a fantastic little fish. Yep. And you can see just exactly what we've been seeing right, uh, right from the get-go, right in the end of the nose. There it is. Not a strong bite. They're fickle today. Mouse is exactly correct. This is the perfect fish for table fare. Let's transition now to the kitchens at the Westview Lodge as we're preparing our lake trout to go in the brine and eventually to be smoked. You'll notice that our fillets are skin free and that we're also relieving these fillets of the lateral line and any fatty tissue areas. We like to get as much fat off the surface of the fish as we can before it's smoked. Once that's prepared, we'll cut the fish into smaller sizes and we'll place them in a hotel pan where we can put brine over the top of those fillets and let them sit for approximately 48 hours. Let's take a look at what we're using for the brine. Okay, let's take a look at the fish we've got right here in the pan. We've got it all set up. Uh, everything's trimmed down and everything's prepared for the smoker, an entire bin of lake trout. Let's take a look at the basic ingredients just for the recipe that we're going to use today. Now we have several, but the first one, Kikamen teriyaki sauce. You know, you can make your own teriyaki up if you want. You can buy this in a gallon, gallon jug. You may notice that uh, I'm wearing a Cisco cap today. Of course, at the Westview Lodge here on the eastern end of Lake Ontario, we've got a full service restaurant. So the bulk of what we purchase is from Cisco because we get quality products, no substitutions, and everything's the same each and every week. So Kikaman teriyaki sauce, we've got some light brown sugar, we've got some kosher salt, you can use that, or pickling salt. I've got cracked black pepper, and I've got table grind black pepper, as well as some honey. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna come over here, we're gonna start mixing this. Everybody's gonna want just a recipe where they've got so many parts, you know, per each, per each unit, and I'm not gonna do that today. We're gonna do, do it by taste, and uh, 
if you're going to work with this stuff, you need to become what we refer to at the Westview as a foodie. There's certain items that are going to go together, and there's certain items that aren't going to go together. So we're going to we're going to continue to to build this the way that we'd like it to taste. We're going to put some brown sugar into that into that teriyaki, and we're going to really. It's important, I think, especially with a, a fine green fish there like lake trout, to put a fair amount of a fair amount of brown sugar in that and really sweeten it up. I think that helps in the smoke. So I'm just gonna put in an amount that I think is is appropriate. I'm gonna put some honey in next. And we're gonna use the honey again just before just before we actually smoke the fish, we're going to baste with it one more time. And then uh, I'm going to save the table grind and the craft black pepper for when the fish is ready to go. I'm going to put just a little bit of kosher salt in there right now just to get so that. We've got all those ingredients in, uh, in our mixing bowl. We'll just get a little whisk and we're just going to we're just going to mix this stuff up make sure that all the sugar and that honey and everything is mixed in there you know another ingredient that I'm not using here today on this particular recipe but you can do it especially if you're running a small batch of fish the other thing that I sometimes like to add to that in addition to the honey is a little bit of uh, a little bit of maple syrup you put some maple syrup in there you can do that to taste we've got another recipe that we call uh, sugar maple and then we've got another one that we call apple honey so if we don't put it in the teriyaki mix not necessarily an issue once it's whisked together i'm going to tell you what i do it i put my finger in it and i taste it just to make sure that it's sweet enough this particular recipe in my opinion needs a little bit more brown sugar i'm going to put more brown sugar in it we're going to whisk that in until we get it it would be perfectly fine the way that it is right now. It tastes pretty good, but I think with uh, just a little bit more brown sugar in there, uh, that'll be a little bit better. We're gonna pour this marinade right in. It's about all we need for that one. So we're gonna keep that refrigerated. We're gonna save the remainder of that for the next batch of fish that we're doing. And uh, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this soak. And the idea here is what we found best is about a 48 hour soak. So we'll let it soak for 24 hours. We'll mix it, coat it all around the fish. I'm just gonna kind of move things around here so that all surfaces of the fish are, are covered. This will break down as it sits in the, in the, the walk-in. And we like to keep this stuff refrigerated while it's marinating. Um, we'll put a, some saran wrap over the top of this. We'll make sure that that surface is covered. We'll let that marinate for 24 hours. Then I'll come in and I'll roll that fish and put the other side down for the, the remaining. After our fish is brined for 48 hours, we'll remove it, pat it dry, and let it come to room temperature. We'll sprinkle it again with kosher salt. That will help to draw moisture and create a glazed appearance on the surface of the fish. Once we see that, we know it's ready to smoke. At this point, we'll take our maple syrup and honey mixture and we'll baste the surface of the filet. That'll help to hold other seasonings and it'll also add a sweetness in the smoking process. The last thing that we like to do is put on a copious amount of cracked black pepper. We think that that gives the filet a kick during the smoking process and finishes it nicely. Then it's time to place it in the smoker where it will reside for two and a half to three hours at 165 degrees. While we're waiting for the fish to smoke properly, let's go back to Lake Ontario where Scott Haney is locked in battle with a dandy lake trout. Raising them up just a little bit. Watch him start bouncing on the bouncing on the rig. Hadn't quite tripped it yet. We snapped that out and went to the fish. Got Scott on the rod. We got Chris on the net with a cigar. Handy with a cigar. <laughs> Handy with a cigar. Captain Mouse with the wheel. <laughs> 
That's right, Safe Charter's making fishing great again. Ow! <laughs> right, steady as she goes. Scott, I want you to nice fish. Wind down again. Big hog we got on right here. This is the guy we want nice and easy, Scott. Wind down again, stay there with him. Okay, now raise him back up. Back up, Scott, back up, back up, back up. Get him, Chris, go. All right, easy, easy, watch the bells. Big hog right there. Stay right there, Chris, keep your rod tip high. Nice, nice, big giant trout right there. In and out of the net and perfect. Now, you, can see, you can see right where this fish hit it. This is what we're talking about. This is why it's so important to run a three bead system. Hold it right there, just like that. You can see the three beads right there behind it. To push it back, and he's right up here in the very end of the nose. Big, anyways, big, take your hand right off that. Let his tail hang right down. Look at this guy right Bouncing here. On number three. He's a dandy. Just an absolute dandy fish. Scott, well done, buddy boy. Thank you. That's a monster. <laughs> That's a good one. Let's put them right there. Well, our fish has been smoking for the last three hours. It's now time to come out of the smoker, cool to room temperature, where we can break it into smaller portions and vacuum seal it so it can be frozen and saved to be enjoyed as an appetizer on our next fishing outing. I'd like to thank the members of the Safe Charter team, Captain Chris Kirchner, Captain Jeremy Mouse Reed, Andy Capone, and Scott Haney for helping us put today's video together. Won't you please consider us if you're thinking about coming to fish Lake Ontario. I'm Captain Bill Safe III. Thanks for watching.